Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Addiction Health Podcast, where we discuss the latest in news, sports, and entertainment. As it pertains to addiction, addiction recovery, and mental health, as always, I am Dan Hauser, and that is Jessica Miller, Editorial Director of AddictionHelp.com. Jess, how's it going? How was your week? Um, so far, so good, honestly. Um, I wish I had something more exciting to talk about, but I really don't. We Well, so it was my husband's birthday last week, so I guess. You know, there's that. I mean, that's something I would hope that that's something fun. I mean, you know, I hope you yeah. like the guy enough to that would be fun. I do. I do like him. He is uh, he is pretty neat. Um, yeah, we went actually to Hot Pot with the family for his birthday dinner and had a lot of fun. It was pretty great. Fun. That sounds yeah. super fun. But that's uh, it. <laughs> right, well, yeah. awkward transition. Uh, Let's segue. <laughs> <laughs> Normally today's we're so much better at this. <laughs> today, well, there's really no natural way to segue to today's topic of discussion unfortunately but that's okay because it's an important one uh today's top this week's topic is going to be on relapse and just this one was actually once again i've been saying this a lot lately but this one was actually uh your idea as well when we got done recording uh last week you immediately were like i got next week's episode (laughs) i got an idea something i want to run with so uh if you just want to kind of take us off the top kind of give us a little introduction sort of rundown about relapse and uh we'll take it from there Awesome. Um, Thank you. Well, so the reason I wanted to talk about relapse today is because it is something that's incredibly common and it's talked about, but I feel like, like a lot of things, it often talked about in sort of these hushed tones. You know, there's, there's a lot of misconceptions about relapse. There is a lot of shame and uh, misinformation about relapse. So I thought, you know, this is, it's, it's just the reality. It is is for some people a part of the recovery process. And so let's talk about it. Um, first and foremost, so okay, what is relapse? And technically speaking, relapse is, is defined as it's it's more than just a brief oops moment. So for example, let's say, like for me, let's say I am in recovery and am completely sober, I am no longer drinking or doing drugs or whatever, and then I go back to heavy drinking and it's like it becomes a consistent issue again. That is a relapse. It's more than just a brief accident or slip. So for example, if let's say someone is sober from alcohol and they have a moment of weakness and they have a drink and realize, oh no, I screwed up. Let me get back on track. That's technically not considered a relapse. Or if they even have a drink on accident. I mean, we've heard stories about that before where you go yeah. out to dinner or you go out to to meet some friends and you think that you have gotten a sober drink, whether it's a mocktail or, or yes. just something. And and whether you grabbed the wrong drink by accident or the bartender gave you the wrong drink or, or mixed something up the wrong way, you know, that, that, that is, can happen as well too. And while, yeah, it's, I, it's natural to freak out about it and think that you've thrown everything away that, like you mentioned, that might necess- that doesn't te- necessarily technically fall under the realm of a full-blown relapse. Exactly. Yes. So, so what we're talking about today is is the full relapse it's when somebody actually returns to substance abuse versus maybe has a slip and there was a phrase that um that i've kind of heard that i don't know how common it is but i really like it because i think it illustrates sort of the difference is it a slip or is it a slide did you slip up or are you full like getting back down to you know not necessarily rock bottom but (laughs) a bad place and so we're talking about relapse. However, I think something that's really important that we also need to address is that relapse is not a failure. And so while it is a return to... I think you need to, you need to repeat that again. You need yes. to hammer that one home. Yeah. For real. You're it right. Is a failure. Not. Yes. And capital relapse N, is not capital a failure. O, capital T, not yes. a failure. Um, in fact, it is... It is pretty common, an estimated 40 to 60% of people with substance use disorders do experience a relapse at some point. Don't let that scare you. So while that may seem very high, it's when you consider it in terms of disease, 
it's actually not too bad. So asthma, for example, asthma is also a disease. Asthma is an issue where you can be treating it and there is a 50 to 70% chance that you will have a relapse of symptoms. So 40 to 60%, roughly half, sounds very scary, sounds very disheartening, but good news, it doesn't mean because you've relapsed, everything's ruined, you've lost all progress, and there is no hope for you. That is the opposite, in fact. Um, the good news is that, um, so here's some additional stats that will probably make you feel a little bit better. 60%, so more than half of people are still sober after the two-year mark, and the chances of relapse after five years is only 15%. So really what that data is showing us is the longer you go with being sober, the less your chances are of relapse. I mean, that's, it's a habitual thing. It becomes a lifestyle. The sobriety becomes sort of part of your identity. However, um, relapse happens. And it's so important, again, to note that not only is it not a, a failure for you, it, it also doesn't mean that the treatment didn't work. We're talking about taking an issue that the person had and it, you know, if it was to the point of addiction, it becomes a lifestyle choice. It becomes an identity essentially of that person. So quitting that and, and doing it flawlessly, when you really think about that, that's, that's really difficult. It's like, think about those of you watching, if you've ever tried to stick to an exercise regime or a particular diet or anything. And how many of us can say that we did that flawlessly? Never fell off the wagon, never like, whoops, I had junk food, you know, or uh, I didn't work out today, even though I was supposed to, like probably no one, right? It's really hard. It is hard to make those changes, even when we know it's good for us, even when we're excited about it, even when we're happy about it. So when you think of relapse in those terms, it doesn't mean that you're like you're a garbage person <laughs> because you've relapsed. It is it is something, yes, to take seriously and to handle and manage. And we'll get into that in a little bit. But also it's not it doesn't mean like, oh, the treatment program failed. Everything you've done has been a waste and nothing matters. I think Does it's important sense? to remember. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's important to remember, too, that like everything else in life, everything is a learning experience. So yes. relapse, and this is a great reason why we reiterate too, it's not a failure because if you or somebody you know has experienced relapse, all that means is that the particular method they were using with to, to maintain their sobriety for whatever reason was not effective for them. And we talk right. about Something this a lot. Something went when wrong we talk, somewhere. And we talk about this a lot during in specifically during active addiction treatment is every not everything works different for everyone that's why everyone when they're in treatment gets their own customized treatment plan and it's not just a one size fits all thing because everything works differently for everyone so and this was great because Leah touched on it a lot on that episode when we interviewed her i mean as somebody who obviously has re she'd relapsed multiple times you get the sense that once somebody goes through a relapse and i feel like she kind of conveyed this well you learn from it and you're like okay so that didn't work. So let's try this again and see if what I do this time maybe works a little bit better, if that makes yes. sense. Too. So let's, what I want to touch on next is, you know, the things that can put someone at risk for a relapse, because, you know, obviously if, if you don't, if you don't relapse, hey, that's great. And the goal is obviously not to go into it thinking that you're going to relapse. You want to, of course, try not to. And that's great. So what puts people at risk for relapse? Um, I feel like we'll probably do a much deeper dive into relapse and such in a future episode. But for now, just kind of to go over the basics, um, dress, conflict, emotional triggers. So a lot of times somebody might return to substance abuse because they're maybe they're stressed at work. They had a really crappy day and they're used to that, like, <laughs> their emotional support beer, you know what I mean? Like at the end of a, a bad week or, or, you know, the kids are just being wild or maybe it's something that feels comfortable to them. Yes. Still, even, and even so they, after the fact. Right. And so perhaps, you know, they've been trying to use other coping mechanisms like listening to music or going for a run, but in that moment of weakness, they are overwhelmed emotionally. And so they feel 
that trigger and they reach out for something that in their minds used to work long ago. Um, that is a really, really, really common situation that can cause relapse or lead to relapse. Um, for others, it might be peer pressure. So a, like one of the big things that they talk about in recovery too is for some people cutting ties with people you used to use with or drink with or putting up boundaries and you know, some people, especially celebrities, I think we've talked about this in previous episodes, some people really benefit from getting treatment outside of where they generally live because like all their drug contacts are there. And so it's so much easier to relapse when you're right in that environment, in that situation around those same people. And so sometimes just being in that environment, especially if you have some like kind of toxic friends that encourage you. I've, I've seen it, you know, like, come on, man, you don't really need to quit drinking. It's not that big of a deal. Like it's seriously, you know, you're not going to have just one drink. And I've, or even, I've I mean, even that. if you stay, even if you stay locally too, obviously that's why a lot of uh, treatment professionals encourage and recommend inpatient treatment as well, because yeah, you don't, it, it, you don't necessarily have to leave town to do it, but because you are living in that facility 24 hours a day during treatment, there's no outside temptations influence or anything else that couldn't that can sway you i guess you could say right well and likewise that's why you know even after treatment sober communities uh halfway houses all of those things are so beneficial for people because it it surrounds you with the right type of influences and the right type of people and so that it can help combat you know if you don't have a good support system or you have find a crappy friends that aren't encouraging your sobriety like even Leah talked about that, that she's very thankful for her friend group because they've always been very um, accepting. You know, she goes to music festivals and as a sober person, that can feel intimidating because a lot of us, I think, associate music festivals with like doing drugs and getting drinks, you know, like it's nine dollar beer night at the music festival kind of thing. And uh, having friends that are kind of pressuring you to go along with what they're doing, like that sucks. And that's very common that can lead to a relapse. And again, we're talking about full relapse, not even just a slip, but for a lot of people, one slip and sometimes they decide like, oh, I've already ruined it, screw it. And they just go right back into, um, you know, using again. And so to, you know, my original point being um, what puts someone at risk for relapse, one other thing is physical discomfort. And that can be, especially for people who are in pain, who may have gotten addicted to opioids, may they have long-term chronic pain, et cetera, or the discomfort of withdrawals. Like withdrawals suck, <laughs> you know, your body's readjusting. And while there are medications you can take a lot of times uh, with the help of your doctor to lessen that discomfort, sometimes during the withdrawal process, people just decide, screw it, this is uncomfortable, and they go back to using, and it's a full relapse. So, I mean, yeah. that's not uncommon either. Another reason why you and I both feel like we're broken records sometimes when we write our when we write our content and our pages up, um, it's why we're constantly hammering home that detoxing should always be done under the care and supervision of trained medical professionals. Because yes, for in su for some substances, self detoxing can actually be deadly. Uh, but the majority of the time, uh, self-detoxing is just not recommended because there's it's so much easier to just during those really, really bad withdrawals to just go back to using again, especially if you're doing it in your house and you haven't disposed of whatever the substance was. So once again, um, by doing so under medical care and supervision, whether it's at a local medical facility, uh, a dedicated detox center, many treatment centers also offer detox services, but by Having those trained professionals monitoring you around the clock, they can provide medication to help ease the pain, both both literally and proverbially. Uh, they can also provide medications that should you find yourself trying to relapse will either make you not want to drink or do drugs or might actually make you sick doing so to the point where it's like, yeah, okay, I get it. I get it. I'm out. Uh, right. And you get no just, benefit from yeah. using. You get you no know? benefit because it basically it numbs it. Um but also just they're there to be emotional support and to help you through the the difficulties that come with detoxing withdrawals, both physically and mentally. And so that way they can help kind of 
keep you on that right direction instead of just being at home and saying, yeah, you know what? I, I can't do this anymore. I need to just go drink again or go take whatever substance I was taking again. Yep. Uh, I mean, I did it like we talked last week about, you know, me using Kratom a lot and it was for me completely out of control. And uh, after two days, I was like, oh, this is hell because I quit cold turkey. Um, I did get approval to do so that it was safe to do so for me, but um, it was awful. And so I poured myself like an eight ounce glass of it. And I remember thinking to myself, like, OK, I I get it. I understand why people decide like uh, time out. And that was stupid of me. It didn't make anything any better for more than, you know, like an hour. And then I was right back where I started, um, which brings me to my next point, actually. So relapse is can be incredibly dangerous um, because for a lot of people, you know, you build up a tolerance. And what that means is you it's it's to use alcohol as an example. Um, I think we all know someone that like can like drink you under the table, so to speak. You know, they they can drink a lot of beer or a lot of liquor or whatever, and it doesn't hit them super hard versus people that don't drink very often would say like, oh my gosh, I'm a lightweight, like, you know, only two beers and I'm already like, woo. And that's because your body uh, builds build the tolerance. And of course, it's going to be different per the individual and the person's size and metabolism, blah, blah, blah. But what it boils down to is the more of a substance you consume, the more your body will get used to it. And so you are more, uh, you build up a tolerance to it. Well, as after you quit something, and your body is like returning to its natural normal state, like me, for example, quitting drinking. I used to be able to drink a lot before I started feeling the effect of the booze. But now if I were to have one drink, I'd be pretty loopy. Problem is, is once your body starts returning to normal, a lot of addicts will try to use what they were used to using the same amount that they had gotten used to and because their body is re-regulating what was once an okay amount is now a lethal amount so uh alcohol yes it could happen with that but we're talking more like opiates and that kind of thing and that's really common like heroin users for example might be using you know x amount for a very long time they quit they're going through the withdrawal process and their body's re-regulating they are struggling they go back they decide screw it i'm i'm done i'm relapsing they go back out and try to do the same amount and then they over they overdose and they die so like relapse is also extremely dangerous and i think it's not talked about enough because you know, people don't necessarily think about that. And that's, that's, you mentioned it, but that's especially true um, early on and particularly in the recovery process. Cause like you mentioned, the, the most common time where a relapse would occur during those early days of recovery is absolutely during that detox and withdrawal process. And like you mentioned, yeah, uh, someone was taking, you know, three pills and that was nothing to them because they had the tolerance built up. They are in recovery they are like, I can't do this anymore. They go and take their three pills. And all of a sudden, three pills is a lethal dose because their body is yes. used to zero pills. And so, yeah, it can it can be incredibly, incredibly dangerous and deadly. And, and I know we, we speak about overdose a lot in the context of active addiction. But unfortunately, there's a lot of times where overdose can happen as well, too, even during the recovery process during a relapse. Right. Right. Um, so the, I don't know if this is necessarily good news, but there are signs that you can look out for in either yourself or a loved one that, um, might indicate that relapse is on the horizon. There are a couple of things to look for. So I wanted to talk about those as well, because I think that's, it's also important. You know, it's not like relapse just sort of happens, right? It's, it's sort of a mental process. Um, so one thing that you might start to notice is uh, someone who is maybe at risk for relapse starts romanticizing prior use or minimizing their prior use. So like talking about, you know, getting high and like, oh, you know, gosh, I, I loved the feeling of 
like, yeah, of course it was, you know, it was really bad for me, but, but, you know, I, I loved being, being drunk on a Friday, you know, and just like, like talking about it, you know, in a way that isn't acknowledging the damage that it did or the harm that it caused. Like clearly if they're in recovery, it got to a point where it was not sustainable and not good. Um, other times, you know, people might, might minimize it, you know, like, oh, I wasn't really that bad. I mean, come on, you know, sure. I was a little sloppy, but I guess it wasn't, you know, it wasn't horrible. And so you start like, it's like they're playing these mental gymnastics with themselves about their drug use or their alcohol use. And you can start hearing it in the way they're, they're talking about their past with it. Um, so that it's not necessarily an indicator of relapse, but it is absolutely a warning sign because really it's showing that the person is uh, not fully acknowledging the harm and looking at like only the good stuff. It's kind of like, like a toxic relationship where, you know, we have that, that ex, like, don't call her, don't, you know, like do not drunk dial them or like the, you know, the memes about that stuff, but it's similar. It's like, you know, you're obviously broken up for a reason. They treated you like crap and they were terrible to you and all your friends hated how you were when you were with them. But like that person starts saying like, well, but you know, he did buy me flowers every birthday. And, you know, it's like, it, it's that person forgetting how miserable they were and how awful it was. So it's kind of, it's similar to that if I had to come up with an analogy. Um, so another potential sign also is is a change in behavior as <laughs> you might be hearing that like okay well obviously jessica like that's yes their behavior is going to change that seems pretty obvious um but it's like little things you know um and it, it can also be a little bit of like overconfidence you know it can it can start that way where they might start skipping meetings um that's not necessarily the case right like some people will do like 30 meetings in 30 days in their early recovery and that's a great commitment for them and then after that maybe they don't need it as much so i mean i get it it's a fine line it's a gray area but like are they are they skipping meetings are they maybe not taking it as seriously because they think like oh i'm fine or um you know it's no longer a priority that can happen also they they're isolating themselves what were you going to say dan they may start hanging around their old friend groups again from yes. back when they were using. They may start gravitating back to those people again. That's another one to keep an eye out for. Yeah, that's a great point, right? Where they've they've made the decision to like, oh, I know that, you know, Dan and Jess are obviously like really bad influences on me, but like, you know, start hanging out with them again. Like, oh, maybe not. Or like going to bars with your old friends, but like, oh, well, I'm not drinking. I'm just hanging out with them. Like, really? That seems... Like, why would you put yourself in that situation? So that's something to look out for. Um, also isolating themselves, you know, because there is a lot of shame that comes with addiction and and relapse, even before the relapse has fully happened. And so if that person is starting to isolate themselves, um, it's a little, you know, a red flag. It, it may not necessarily mean anything. You know, some of us are <laughs> me introverts and so you know we definitely really appreciate and need that that me time that quiet time whatever but just keep an eye on that um also if you're finding that you are isolating yourself a little bit just keep an eye on that you know as as i know as a from a mental health perspective um and we talk about this in my friend group you know some of us are kind of like this where when we're having a rough time brain wise we have a tendency sometimes to self-isolate because, you know, we're just in our own heads and it's messy up there. And sometimes, you know, like me, I'll check myself and realize like, yeah, maybe I should like reach out to my friends a little right now versus just like staying in bed all day. You know, like if you start noticing that in yourself, just be aware of it because it, it can indicate that you are on a slippery slope. Um, and then finally, and this one is, you know, it's sincere potentially usually, but when someone is, is, uh, questioning the overall recovery process, wondering, you know, does this actually work? Does AA re like, do these steps really do anything? I don't know how I feel about these smart meetings. Like my sponsor, eh, you know, they're just weird. Like things like that, that, you know, they're, they're questioning the overall process and maybe nitpicking a lot of different things. It's again, it's a gray area. There's definitely 
an, um, it's okay to have concern, I guess, or questions or doubts, that's fine. It's a hard process. But just, again, be aware that that can potentially lead to more doubt, to denial, to F, what's the point? All of this is BS. I'm just going to relapse. You know? I think another important one, too, is um, mood changes. I know mood changes are a big indicator dur during active addiction, but think about it. And we talked about it a little bit in the beginning. Somebody who is going through a rel relapse, they're likely to be upset with themselves, frustrated with themselves, embarrassed with the for themselves, uh, annoyed. There's so many different feelings that they can be experiencing because they've relapsed and as is the case with all humans, when we're feeling a certain way, we may tend to show that outwardly. We may uh, snap at somebody or react in a certain way. So uh, if you may, you know, if you're noticing that someone may be kind of behaving in ways that they may have behaved during active addiction or even just behaving strangely uh, since they started their recovery, it could be an indication that that's because they're they've relapsed and they're just, you know, they're annoyed, frustrated, sad, upset, angry, you know, with themselves and they, you know, they're, they're taking it out on you or, or taking it out just yeah. to the world in general. That's a good point. I, so I kind of want to jump ahead in our notes then, because I feel like this is a, a really good tie in. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the stages of relapse because that's a thing too. And I feel like we've alluded to it already a little bit. And this is like, you set this up perfectly, Dan, without even realizing it. Um, because the the first if you're just that good um the first stage of relapse is called emotional relapse and so it's, it's basically before the actual drug use happens again um there are a couple things that happen first and so a lot of what we're talking about right now is the emotional relapse part and that's the first thing that happens where um you know a lot of people who have issues with substance um substance use disorder also have mental health struggles or you know have <laughs> struggle with coping like me you know my whole story was like I couldn't cope with my grandmother's death so I just like drank my way through 2020 um or they've just gotten in a really bad habit it's it's a lot of it is is tied to like an emotional aspect of their lives we talked already about like oh you're super stressed or you didn't know how to cope or you know you don't necessarily have good boundaries around your friend groups. I mean, so emotionally, the person isn't necessarily thinking about relapse in a lot of cases. And that, that's what makes it kind of sinister. It's all these other things. Subconsciously, they may start looking for another outlet. And they may, you know, start feeling uneasy and they're not relying on their tools they're doubting the process they're maybe putting themselves in situations that they shouldn't be but a lot of it is very background um and it's again it's a very slippery slope and so after that comes the mental relapse it's usually after the emotional side where this is where the person starts to become aware of their desire to relapse in a sense like they start to realize they're having an inner conflict. Um, they might start considering like, well, if it's, you know, it's just one dream. It's like, I probably can. Like, it's something Leah actually talked about where she felt like, you know, and this is something I've, I've talked with about um, a couple loved ones who have very similar issues. Like, well, you know, I can I can drink like normally. I'm I'm aware of it now. Right. And and so I deserve. Is there a drink after a, a long, hard week? Why not? Why not? And it, so you start rationalizing it. So it's this, the mental relapse then starts happening where there's the, the segue of the emotional issues that have kind of led to this moment and they start feeling a little torn. They start maybe justifying. They start minimizing, like we mentioned before, or romanticizing, like, hey, I really enjoyed, you know, my little treat at the end of the week, or I really, you know, I, I had some great wild fun times at the casino with my friends, you know, staying up all night and doing whatever drugs we were doing. Like, like they start telling these stories and thinking back to the fun times before it all became a disaster. Um, the good old days. Exactly. And that 
all then builds to the physical relapse, the final stage where the actual they actually return to drug or alcohol use. Um, during this phase, you know, some people, a lot of people will say like they that's it. Once they start using again, like they com- it's not just a slip. It's a full slide down that hill right back to previous use. Um, so it's it's more than just like and, and this can happen like all of these stages can lead to just a slip. And then the person going, oh, no, oh, no, let me get back on track. And that doesn't technically count as a relapse. Um, but for some people, this process leads to a slip and then sometimes they will rationalize, well, I'm already here, so I might as well just return back. I've already ruined it, right? Like I've already broken the diet. I might as well eat all of the junk food for the next, you know, several weeks. This is a similar kind of mentality. And so there we are, full relapse. Anything you want to add? I mean, you you explained it all so eloquently. Uh, anything that I would have thrown in there, you you already hit the nail right on the head with. Well, so then I think the last thing I really want to talk about is, okay, so relapse has happened. Now what? Um, you know, this what? Is, very important. I know we, we've spent the first 30 minutes or so talking all about relapse, but it's important to then talk about, okay, right now what? And, and because... Once again, as we talk about every week, um, there are it's okay not to be okay. There are ways to go get help. There are people that want to help you, even if you have relapsed. There are people that still want to right. To You're help not you a failure. Help you get back on back on track. So yeah, uh, I think it's incredibly important that we right off the right out of the gate, um, if a relapse has occurred, it's important to basically. I don't want to say start the process all over again, but you almost do want to kind of start the process all over again as far as uh, treatment and uh, recovery goes because you have added these uh, toxins, for lack of a better term, back into your system. So you need to then, just like the first time, get them back out again. Yep. A hundred percent. And it depends on what how how bad the slip has been. If it's like, is it just... And this, just to um, just as an aside, this list is just as important for somebody that's just had a slip and not technically a full relapse as someone that's like fully relapsed all of this can apply to to Absolutely. anyone um and to dan's point like okay if you've started using again like go right back to getting help talk to your your sponsor your loved ones your addiction counselor your you know whoever whoever has been your point of contact or a point of contact during the recovery process for you let them know i promise it's 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 going to feel a little yucky, but I promise they're not going to judge you and hate you. You know, they're not going to tell you to get lost. They're not going to throw you out on the street. Right. You're not going to go to jail. Like nothing. You might feel like the world is crashing down on top of your head, but it's not actually like y- you got this. If you have yeah. the right support system in your life, then those people are going to still continue to support you and then help you with your relapse the same way that they were helping you during your active addiction treatment as well. Yes. Um, and you may need to, you know, check into a facility or, you know, talk to your doctor again about re-detoxing and doing it safely. Um, so, you know, make get that settled first to make take care of your physical health first. And then after that, you know, a lot of people like right away sometimes go to a meeting and that's it's almost a cliche. But if you especially if you've already been going to meetings super helpful go go to a meeting there are lots of people who have been to meetings that will tell you like yep i relapsed and here's my story and one of the first things i did after i realized like oh man i screwed up i don't want to go down this path i went to a meeting so if you can go to a meeting um third thing you can do is uh check your boundaries take take a look at um like Think about, okay, well, what happened? What went wrong? Do I have any immediate boundaries that I need to nip in the bud? Like, am I going out to the, the bar with all of my friends and trying to be the only sober one and feeling that pressure? Like, okay, maybe you need a boundary there where there wasn't one. Or, you know, maybe you have a particular friend that is constantly like, oh, come on, man, it's really not that big of a deal. Like, just have a drink or, you know, have a bum Coke or, you know, whatever. And they're constantly in your ear, like maybe you need to have a conversation with them about like, hey, this is not helpful. If you are going to continue to do this, I can't have you in my life. So check your immediate boundaries. 
to ensure, again, your safety? Is there something that you are engaging in right now that is putting you at risk? Um, after the initial kind of getting things assessed and getting yourself sorted, take a step back and, um, you know, for some people, you might need to avoid triggers, right? Like, so you just relapsed. That sucks. And you are trying to get back on the right track. Great job. Um, and so you might need to be a little more gentle with yourself and and try to reduce some stresses. Um, you know, it's just like an early recovery when you first started this journey. You you might have needed to take some time off of work or, you know, been a little kinder, like getting making sure you're getting plenty of sleep and a little kinder with yourself and understood like, okay, I know I have a really short fuse right now. So maybe I shouldn't be like taking on extra projects, et cetera. So like try to avoid any stressors and external triggers. Those things we talked about earlier in the podcast today about things that put you at risk for relapse. Um, and, and maybe let's make this less of a slide and more of a slip. So whatever you can kind of eliminate and avoid to keep it from getting worse, let's do that. Um, you may also need to, you know, reflect kind of on like once you've kind of made sure that your, your immediate triggers and issues are taken care of, you might need to do some self-reflection and consider like, okay, what really went wrong? Like, was I mentally not in a good place? And this is something that you might consider, you know, through therapy or talking about in group, you know, like small group or um, like at a meeting or something like that. And it's something that might also kind of come to you in little epiphanies over time. Like Leah talked about in that interview we had with her where, you know, she had two different relapses um, and she's sober now and she's doing great and has been able to kind of look back on those times and reflect on those times and what went wrong so she could apply that knowledge to now to help her be more successful. So just making that adjustment in a, in a, a way that's also acknowledging that you're just human, man. You're out here doing your best. You're doing a great thing. You're, you're getting your stuff in order. So while relapse totally sucks, and I get that, let's maybe not be so mean to ourselves and just do what we need to do to get back on track. If that makes it's sense. important to remember too that you know you say not to be mean to ourselves. If you're if you're experiencing or going through a relapse and you're beating yourself up because of it, this is going to sound really strange, but that's actually a good thing because if you if your reaction to your relapse was whatever, okay, and then just right. kept moving on, meant that you really weren't all that interested in getting the help that you needed anyway like i don't know another point. way to put it but, but basically like no because you're right like, your reaction is like seriously can't believe, because your reaction is like i can't believe i did this or i'm so upset at myself or how stupid could i be because you care it means that you still want to do what's best for yourself and so that's a great point that's important to as long as you have not lost that urge and desire to be the best person you can be and to do better for yourself. And it almost doesn't matter how many times you relapse because the, the, the end goal is still at the end of the day that you want to be the best person you can be. So right. I almost feel like if there was no reaction to a relapse, that's almost worse than, than beating mm -hmm. yourself up because no reaction means that you've just kind of given up in right. a weird way. Versus like, let's just pick yourself back up, dust yourself off, keep moving forward. You're right. There, it's once again, it's a like fine line gray area. You don't want to beat yourself up too much and stay in this world of self loathing, but you also want to take seriously and and acknowledge like, okay, this is a relapse. This was bad. Let's keep this from happening again. What can I learn from this experience? What do I need to change? What do I need to fix? How do I keep myself safe and healthy in the future? The great point. Well, on that note, like I feel like. Um, you know, that really covers everything I, I wanted to talk about on the topic, unless, you know, there's anything that you wanted to add, Dan? No. So I think um, on that note, that's that's a great time to, as we wrap up the show for the week, to remind everyone like we do every week that um, it is okay not to be okay. And if you or someone you know is struggling, whether it be with ac active addiction, mental health struggles, substance abuse, or relapse, uh, there are people out there that want to help you. There are ways to get the help that you need. 
Uh, findtreatment.gov is a great place to find treatment options in your area. There's also the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, and they have a toll-free number, and that is 1-800-662-4357. That is 1-800-662-4357, and that is a manned uh, hotline, and so someone will be pick up on the other end of that and we'll be able to help you out with anything you may need, whether you just need to talk to somebody, you need to find treatment options, you need to know uh, what, what the next steps are, what you can do to get the help that you need. There'll, there'll be somebody to walk you through that. And then of course, I, I say it every week, but Jess is doing truly amazing work there on addictionhelp.com. The resource pages her and her writing team over there are doing uh, truly great work. They provide so much amazing information. We've just kind of scratched the surface on this episode as far as relapse. They go so much more in depth over on the website. Uh, Jess mentioned off the top end as well. Uh, we will be doing kind of a deeper dive into a relapse in a future episode. Also, on that note as well, future episode, please continue to like, subscribe, rate, and review. Uh, continue to share with us your comments, your concerns, your questions, your stories. Uh, I think we would, we, I, I think I speak for Jess here as well. Uh, we would love to do another uh, listener QA yes. here in the next, <laughs> uh, coming up in the next couple of weeks. So please. Please, please, please send your questions in and we will answer them on the air. We are definitely going to do uh, kind of a summer edition, you could call it, a summer break edition almost of a, a listener Q&A. So we're, we're compiling that together. So please, if you have any questions, there's no such thing as a stupid question, especially with Honestly, what we do. Yeah. So yeah, even if you think that the question is dumb, I promise you there's someone else out there that probably has that same question and they right. also would like to get that answer. So please uh, share your yep. questions with us. We are actually going to do another listener Q&A here in the coming weeks, so make sure to be, stay tuned for that, as well as a uh, more little in-depth uh, episode on relapse as well. So that'll do it for today's show. Thank you guys so much for listening, and we will talk to you guys next week. Have a great week, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye.